Hey guys, we're in Joshua 1. Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please um, bless everyone with your peace who watches these videos. And um, please help us understand the wisdom and knowledge we retain today. And thank you for choosing to die on the cross for us. We love you, Jesus, and thank you for loving us. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Joshua 1, the contemporary English version. <clears throat> Put something on to stir real quick. Okay. Joshua becomes the leader of Israel. Moses, the Lord's servant, was dead, so the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, who had been the assistant of Moses. The Lord said, My servant Moses is dead. Now you must lead Israel across the Jordan River into the land I am giving to all of you. Wherever you go, I will give you that land as I promised Moses. It will reach from the southern desert to the Lebanon mountains in the north and to the northeast as far as the great Euphrates River. It will include the land of the Hittites. This refers to the northern part of Syria, which had been the southernmost part of the Hittite Empire. And the land from here at the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea on the west. Joshua, I will always be with you and help you as I help Moses, and no one will ever be able to defeat you. Long ago, I promised the ancestors of Israel that I would give this land to their descendants, so be strong and brave. Be careful to do everything my servant Moses taught you. Never stop reading the book of the law or teachings he gave you. Day and night, you must think about what it says. If you obey it completely, you and Israel will be able to take this land. I have commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged. I am the Lord your God, and I will be there to help you wherever you go. The Eastern Tribes promised to help. Joshua ordered the tribal leaders to go through the camp and tell everyone, In a few days we will cross the Jordan River to take the land that the Lord our God is giving us, so prepare as much food as you'll need for the march into the land. Joshua told the men of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh. East Manasseh is the half of Manasseh that settled east of the Jordan River. The Lord's servant Moses said that the Lord our God has given you land here on the east side of the Jordan River where you could live in peace. Your wives and children and your animals can stay here in the land Moses gave you. But all of you that can serve in our army must pick up your weapons and lead the men of, their, of the other tribes across the Jordan River. They are your relatives, so you must help them conquer the land that the Lord is giving them. The Lord will give peace to them as he has given to you, and then you can come back and settle here in the land that Moses promised you. The men answered, We'll cross the Jordan River and help our relatives. We'll fight anywhere you send us. If the Lord our God will help you as he helped Moses, and if you are strong and brave, we will obey you as we obeyed Moses. We'll even put to death anyone who rebels against you or refuses to obey you. Okay, Joshua 2. Um, Rahab helps the Israelite spies. Ooh, this is interesting. Because I've never read it before. <laughs> Joshua chose two men as spies and sent them from their camp at... So... I'm probably not even pronouncing this right. Acacia. Maybe it's like... Asisha, I don't know, with these instructions. Go across the river and find out as much as you can about the whole region, especially about the town of Jericho. The two spies left the Israelite camp at Acacia and went to Jericho, where they decided to spend the night at the house of a prostitute named Rahab. Um, was possibly, Rahab was possi possibly an innkeeper. But someone found out about them and told the king of Jericho. Some Israelite men came here tonight and they are spies. So the king sent soldiers to Rahab's house to arrest the spies. 
Meanwhile, Rahab had taken the men up to the flat of her house, the flat roof of her house, and had hidden them under some piles of flax plants that she had put there to dry. The stalks of flax plants were harvested, soaked in water and dried. Then their fibers were separated and spun into thread, which was woven into linen cloth. Oh, I didn't know linen came from flax. Okay. The soldiers came to her door and demanded, Let us have the men who are staying at your house. They are spies. She answered, Some men did come to my house, but I didn't know where they had come from. They left about sunset just before it was, go it was time to close the town gate. Many towns and cities had walls with heavy gates that were closed at night for protection. I don't know where they were going, but if you hurry, maybe you can catch them. The guards of the town gate let the soldiers leave Jericho, but they closed the gate again as soon as the soldiers went through. Then the soldiers headed toward the Jordan River to look for the spies at the place where people crossed the river. Rahab went back up to her roof. The spies were still awake, so she told them, I know that the Lord has given Israel this land. Everyone shakes with fear because of you. We heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea so you could leave Egypt. Okay, here's the uh, note here. Red Sea. Hebrew is Yam Suf, or Sea of Reeds, one of the marshes of freshwater lakes near the eastern part of the Nile Delta. This identification is based on Exodus 13, 17 through 14, 9, which lists the towns on the route of the Israelites before crossing the sea. In the Greek translation of the scriptures made about 200 BC, the Sea of Reeds was named Red Sea. Okay. So we heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea so you could leave Egypt. And we heard how you destroyed Sihon and Og, those two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River. We know that the Lord your God rules heaven and earth, and we've lost our courage and our will to fight. Please promise me in the Lord's name that you will be as kind to my family as I have been to you. Do something to show that you won't let your people kill my father and mother and my brothers and sisters and their families. Rahab, the spies answered, if you keep quiet about what we're doing, we promise to be kind to you when the Lord gives us this land. We pray that the Lord will kill us if we don't keep our promise. Or if you save our lives, we will save yours. Rahab's house was built into the town wall. And the note here says, in ancient times, cities and larger towns had high walls around them to protect them against attack. Sometimes houses were built against the wall so that the city wall formed one wall of the house. This added strength to the city wall. Okay, so Rahab, Rahab's house was built into the town wall and one of the w windows in her house faced outside the wall. She gave the spies a rope, showed them the window and said, use this rope to let yourselves down to the ground outside the wall. Then hide in the hills. The men who are looking for you won't be able to find you there. They'll give up and come back after a few days and you can be on your way. The spy said, you made us promise to let you and your family live. We will keep our promise, but you can't tell anyone why we are here. You must tie this red rope on your window when we attack and your father and mother, your brothers, and everyone else in your family must be here with you. We'll take the blame if anyone who stays in this house gets hurt, but anyone who leaves your house will be killed and it won't be our fault. I'll do exactly what you said, Rahab, Rahab promised. Then she sent them on their way and tied the red rope to the window. The spies hid in the hills for three days while the king's soldiers looked for them along the roads. As soon as the soldiers gave up and returned to Jericho, the two spies went down into the Jordan Valley and crossed the river. They reported to Joshua and told him everything that had happened. We're sure the Lord has given us the whole country, they said. The people there shake with fear every time they think of us. Okay, Joshua 3. There are a lot of notes in here. I hope you
hope you guys don't mind if I read them. Okay, Israel crosses the Jordan River. Early the next morning, Joshua and the Israelites packed up and left Acacia. They went to the Jordan River and camped there that night. Two days later, or at the end of three days, their leaders went through the camp shouting, when you see some of the priests, the priests, which are the Levites, because the priests belong to the tribe of Levi. Okay. So two days later, their leaders went through the camp shouting, when you see some of the priests carrying the sacred chest, you'll know it's time to cross to the other side. You've never been there before and you won't know the way unless you follow the chest, but don't get too close. Stay about a kilometer back. Joshua told the people, make yourselves acceptable to worship the Lord because he is going to do some amazing things for us. Then Joshua, you know what's cool is Jesus' name is a form of Joshua and it's Jesus' name is Yeshua. I think it's Hebrew. Actually, I don't know. I just assume that. Okay. Then, verse 6. Then Joshua turned to the priests and said, Take the chest and cross the Jordan River ahead of us. So the priests picked up the chest by its carrying poles and went on ahead. The Lord told Joshua, Beginning today, I will show the people that you are their leader, and they will know that I am helping you as I help Moses. Now tell the priests who are carrying the chest to go a little way into the river and stand there. Joshua spoke to the people. Come here and listen to what the Lord our God said he will do. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites control the land on the other side of the river. But the living God will be with you and will force them out of the land when you attack. And now God is going to prove that he's powerful enough to force them out. Just watch the sacred chest that belongs to the Lord, the ruler of the whole earth. As soon as the priests carrying the chest step into the Jordan, the water will stop flowing and pile up as, some, as if someone had built a dam across the river. Nice. The Lord also has... The Lord has also said that each of the 12 tribes should choose one man to represent it. The Israelites packed up and left camp. The priests carrying the chest walked in front until they came to the Jordan River. The water in the river had risen over its banks as, if, as it often does in springtime or harvest time, which was in late spring for the grain. But as soon as the feet of the priests touched the water, the river stopped flowing and the water started piling up at the town of Adam near Zarethan. Zarethan. No water flowed toward the Dead Sea and the priests stood in the middle of the dry riverbed near Jericho while everyone else crossed the river. Oh, that's so cool. The people set up a monument, Joshua 4. After Israel had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, so it says, tell one man from each of the 12 tribes to pick up a large rock from where the priests are standing. Then tell the men to set up those rocks as a monument at the place where you camp tonight. Joshua chose 12 men. Then he called them together and said, Then he called them together and said, Go to the middle of the riverbed where the sacred chest is and pick up a large rock. Carry it on your shoulder to our camp. There are twelve of you, so there will be one rock for each tribe. Someday your children will ask, Why are these rocks here? Then you can tell them how the water stopped flowing when the chest was being carried across the river. These rocks will always remind our people of what happened here today. Okay, verse 8. The men followed the instructions that the Lord had given Joshua. They picked up 12 rocks, one for each tribe, and carried them to the camp where they put them down. Joshua set up a monument next to the place where the priests were standing. 
This monument was also made of 12 large rocks and it is still there in the middle of the river. The people of Israel set up camp at Gilgal. The army got ready for battle and crossed the Jordan with everyone else. They marched quickly past the sacred chest. Oh, the Hebrew text has the Lord as opposed to the sacred chest. The army was matching, marching past the sacred chest, which was a symbol of God's throne on earth. Okay, they marched quickly past the sacred chest and into the desert near Jericho. 40,000 soldiers from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh led the way as Moses had ordered. The priest stayed right there the priests stayed right where they were until the people had followed the orders that the Lord had given Moses and Joshua. Then they, went, then they watched as the priests carried the chest the rest of the way across. Joshua, the Lord said, tell the priests to come up from the Jordan and bring the chest with them. So Joshua went over to the priests and told them what the Lord had said. And as soon as the priests carried the chest past the highest place that the flood waters of the Jordan had reached, the river flooded its banks again. That's how the Lord showed the Israelites that Joshua was their leader. For the rest of Joshua's life, they respected him as they had respected Moses. It was the 10th day of the first month of the year when Israel crossed the Jordan River. They set up camp at Gilgal, which was east of the land controlled by Jericho. The men who had carried the 12 rocks from the Jordan brought them to Joshua and they made them into a monument. Then Joshua told the people, years from now, your children will ask you why these rocks are here. Tell them the Lord, our God dried up the Jordan river so we could walk across. He did the same thing here for us that he did for our people at the Red Sea because he wants everyone on earth to know how powerful he is and he wants us to worship him only. Okay, Joshua 5. The Amorite kings west of the Jordan River and the Canaanite kings along the Mediterranean Sea lost their courage and their will to fight. When they, had, when they heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan River to let Israel go across. Israel gets ready to celebrate Passover. While Israel was camped at Gilgal, the Lord said, Joshua, make some flint knives. Flint is a stone that can be chipped until it forms a very sharp edge. And circumcise the rest of the Israelite men and boys. They could not celebrate Passover unless they were circumcised. Joshua made the knives and circumcised those men and boys at Haraloth Hill or Horskin Hill. This had to be done because none of Israel's baby boys had been circumcised during the 40 years that Israel had wandered through the desert after leaving Egypt. And why had they wandered for 40 years? It was because right after they left Egypt, the men in the army had disobeyed the Lord. And the Lord had said, none of you men will ever live to see the land that I promised Israel. It is a land rich with milk and honey, and someday your children will live there, but not before you die here in the desert. Everyone who had been circumcised needed time to heal, and they stayed in camp. The Lord told Joshua, It was a disgrace for my people to be slaves in Egypt, but now I have taken away that disgrace. So the Israelites named the place Gilgal. In Hebrew, Gilgal sounds like takeaway, and it still has that name. Israel continued to camp at Gilgal in the desert near Jericho, and on the 14th day of the same month, they celebrated Passover. The next day, God stopped sending the Israelites manna, which was the special food that God provided the is for the Israelites while they were in the desert for 40 years. It was about the size of a small seed and appeared on the ground during the night except on the Sabbath. It was gathered to get, gathered early in the morning, ground up, and then baked or boiled. Okay, the next day, God stopped sending the Israelites manna to eat each morning, and they started eating food grown in the land of Canaan. They ate roasted grain and thin bread made of the barley they had gathered from nearby fields. Israel captures Jericho. 
One day Joshua was near Jericho when he saw a man standing some distance in front of him. The man was holding a sword, so Joshua walked up to him and asked, Are you on our side or our enemy's side? Neither, he answered. I am here because I am the commander of the Lord's army. What? Joshua fell to his knees and bowed down to the ground. I am your servant, he said. Tell me what to do. Take off your sandals, the commander answered. This is a holy place. So Joshua took off his sandals. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all of your laws and teachings you've given us. And we love you, Lord. And thank you for loving us unconditionally. And um, thank you, Lord. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I love you. God bless.